night, Skippy Holmeyer and Virginia Widler star in Weapon 4-H on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Better things that include DuPont Zeland, durable water repellent, DuPont paints and varnishes. Among them, DuPont's new Speed Easy wall paint. This program will be transmitted to our servicemen and women overseas through the Armed Forces Radio Service. The DuPont Cavalcade presents Virginia Widler as Anne. Skippy Holmeyer, who will be featured in the forthcoming Metro Golden Mayor picture, Texas Boys Ranch, appears tonight as Ted in our story, Weapon 4-H. <laughs> more than six million farms in America, and our story takes place on one of them. It's a good farm, not too big. Let's call it average. It's the Martin Farm, run by Mr. Martin, with the help of his wife, his 17-year-old son, Dave, and his 15-year-old daughter, Anne. One day, not so long ago, Mr. Martin walked down the lane to his mailbox and brought back a letter. It's for you, Mother. For me? Who is it from, Paul? I don't know. It's from New York. I'll bet it's just a circular from one of the seed companies. Isn't it, Mom? Mm -hmm. Who's it from, Mom? Let your mother read it, Anne. Well, can you imagine? Who's the letter from, Ellie? It's from Emily Clark. Remember her? Who, Mom? Oh, you don't know her, Anne. But your father ought to remember. Emily Clark. You know, Paul. She used to live down near town on the Roper Farm. Oh, yes. She married Arthur Hyde. But what does she want, Mom? Why is she writing to you? Well, uh, she's been living in New York City ever since she left here, and she has a son about your age, Anne. Her only child? Uh, sounds that way. Let's see. She says his name is Ted, and he's... Uh, he's been sick all winter. Colds and all, and... Uh, well, if you remember about you, she remembered us and wondered if he could come here and stay with us for a visit. Get him fattened up, she says. Oh, gee. I don't know, Ellie. It seems to me we have all we can handle now without taking a boarder. Well, she says he could help us out, do chores around the farm. Well, if he'd really be able to help. Well, that's what she says. Well, we could sure use another pair of hands. The work never seems to get done since Joe went into the Navy. Oh, Ryder, he can come, Mom. It'll be fine. Anne, what do you say, Paul? If you're willing, I'll chance it. Oh, boy. Where do I tell Dave? And you might as well tell her to send him right away. The sooner he gets here, the quicker he gets to work. Ted. The big red building? No, no, that's the barn. The white building this way is the house. A barn bigger than a house. Gee whiz. Well, in some ways, the barn's more important. There. Uh, can you get out all right? Why, sure. Who's that? That's uh, my son, Dave. I have an older boy in the Navy. Yeah, that's what Mom told me. Dave? Oh, Dave. I'll get your suitcase out and... Then Dave can take it up to your room. Okay, fine. You calling me, Dad? Yes, this is Ted Hyde, son. Oh. I'm glad to meet you, Ted. Hiya. Will you take Ted's uh, bag up to his room, Dave, and get him settled? Why, sure, Dad. I want to get back to the South Field. I've lost two hours from my plowing already going into town. All right. Just follow me, Ted. Okay. See you later, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Want me to stick your shirts in this drawer, Ted? Sure, thanks. You got quite a view from this window. View? Oh, yeah. We'll have to buy you some overalls when we go to town. You'll need them. Suits me. Say, who's the slick chick out there? Chick? Where? Down in the garden. Why, oh, I bet one of those Rhode Island Reds has got out. Rhode Island Red? I'm talking about the blonde. Oh. Oh, that's my kid sister, Ann. No fooling. I didn't think they grew them that good looking out in the country. She'd even look good in New York. Yeah. Anna's about the prettiest girl in this county. Say, Ted, you can hang your other stuff in this closet if you want to. Fine, I'll hurry it up. 
What'll I do with the stuff that's in here? Oh, just shove it over and make room. Most of it's mine, but some of it's my brother Joe's. Oh. You sleep in this room, too? Yeah. I hope you can take it. Joe says I really snore. Snore? Yeah. He says his number one post-war project is to build a new room for me. There isn't any other room? No. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. You don't like the idea of a roommate much, do you? Oh, gee, it's just that I've always had a room of my own at home. Oh, you did, huh? Oh, I guess I'll get used to it. Oh, sure you will in no time. <laughs> what, you know, Joe wrote that it was hard for him to get used to sleeping with you guys. He's going to the barn so the cows will keep him company. That's an idea. Oh, but anyway, once you start working, you're going to be so tired now. You don't care where you sleep. <laughs> Go on, scram, Bucky Wucky, before I clip your tail feathers. Oh, a tough guy, huh? <laughs> Look at him run. Bet I can catch him. I'll give you something to quack about. Bingo! Here's another little present. <sighs> To do. Oh, hello. I was just practicing my curve. Practicing? Sure, I was pitcher on my school baseball team. Wanted to see if I had the same touch with a rock. Well, did you find out? Yeah, didn't you see? I hit that duck twice. Bingo. Yes, I saw. Oh, by the way, I'm Ted Hyde. I'm from... Yeah, I know. You're from New York. And you am. Your brother told me your name. Did he? Look, Ted, I... I guess it's because you didn't know what he meant. What is? What you were doing just now? See, all the animals in those ones are more valuable than this, and we don't want them to be hurt. Ducks are valuable? Didn't you ever eat those ducks? Why, sure. But... Someone had to raise it so you could eat it, didn't they? Yeah, I guess you're right. I knew it was because you didn't know any of your business. Come on, you want to help me? I'm weeding the garden. I, uh... Oh, I thought you were...
myself back on a kitty I used to stop off for a milkshake every day after school. Then maybe I'd have time to see a movie. Say, uh, what do you do around here nights for fun? What do you mean? Well, I've been here nearly a week, and all I've seen you do is eat and go to bed. Don't you ever go to town? Sure, once in a while. There's not much gas for that now. Yeah, this gas shortage is a pain. What's there to do in town? Looks like an awful dead little bird to me. Oh, we, we go to the movies sometimes. Well, we have our club meetings. Club meetings? Sure, once a month. The 4-H club. Oh, that again. <laughs> Don't you ever go to dancers? I know you don't have any bands, but if you got records... Oh, sure we have dancers. And sometimes, just for fun, we have square dancers. Square dancers? Oh, you're kidding me. Why would that be kidding you? Excuse me. Oh, I've got to get to Daphne. She's the last cow this morning. I can't get over it. Square dancers. Gee, you really live back in the dark ages. I'll bet you never even heard of jitterbugging. Listen... I've not only heard of jitterbugging, I've done it. But I personally don't like it. Can you manage that? When I tell the guys, they won't believe it. Well, you can tell them something else while you're at it. Yeah, what's that? You can tell them from me that I can get along all right without jitterbugging. Yeah? Yeah. A lot better than they would get along without the milk we send them for those milkshakes you were talking about. Well, gee, I don't know why you're sore, Dave. No, I, didn't... I don't either, but... Look. If you've got nothing to do but talk, save it for later. I'm busy. Three weeks he's been here. Three weeks. Oh, Dave, he'll snap out of it. He just doesn't understand. Doesn't understand? What's there to understand? He's eating our food, letting Mom wait on him hand and foot... And from the minute he got here, he hasn't lifted a finger. Well, he, he helped me with my algebra. Algebra. Do you know that he didn't even carry his own suitcase into the house when he came? He doesn't hang up his clothes. He, he doesn't help stack the dishes. He doesn't do a darn thing but make more work. You can't say anything to him, Dave. Yeah, and, and I know Mom and Dad are too polite to say anything. And you. You think he's cute looking. Well, I just don't think he's quite as bad as you say. Do you realize that we're behind in our club quarters? Ten cases of eggs and 120 bushels of vegetables by September. And we take time out to wait on that... Dave, please. He could at least feed the pigs. That doesn't take any brains. Pigs got brains, David. Yeah, and his feet. Staying up last night until after 11 to listen to some dance band. And keeping me awake, too. Well, I, I guess he likes music. All right, he likes it. But I know one thing. He's not going to our 4-H party. David, we can't leave him behind. Oh, can't we? I can. You can't because I've already asked him. Oh, Anne. Of course I did. I, I had to. He's company. Company? Ted? He's an army of occupation. <laughs> Listening to Skippy Holmeyer as Ted and Virginia Weidler as Anne in Weapon 4-H on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As we return to the second act of our play, Anne and her brother Dave have taken Ted, who is still skeptical about life in the country, to a 4-H club party where square dancing is in progress. Oh, Eleanor, Harris. Hello, Anne. This is Ted Hyde, the boy from New York who's staying with us. Hello. Hiya. It's fun you could get to the party. I guess you don't see much of this kind of dancing in New York, do you? No, I certainly don't. Have you tried it yet? No. It's awful tame to me. Don't you ever have any jive around here? Oh, sure, but we like this, too. Wouldn't you like to learn the square dance? It's fun. Come on, we'll teach you. Teach? That shouldn't take any teaching. When they start again, you dance with me, Ted, okay? Well, what have I got to lose? Hey, Ann, did you know we're going to increase our quarters? 
increase them? Mm-hmm. Why, well, we can't. I couldn't raise another bean. Oh, well, you, you're going to have to try. Seems to me you're awful dopey letting someone tell you how much you've got to work. We don't have to. We want to. Well, after seeing Dave and Ann slaving away, I wouldn't be caught dead in this 4 H club. Where does it get you anyway? Come on, Eleanor. See you later, Ann. Say, why is everyone so touchy around here? What did I say? Nothing, kid. Paris didn't understand you. Use your practice. That's what we do. Well, do you want to try to dance? Looks like a cinch to me. Sure, why not? Then come on. You hold my hand to start and do what the caller tells you. A director and everything. How can you miss? Kitty, that means down the center. Staying right with you, Chick. All the way around and Change your partners and hold the gas. Oh, Ned, you changed partners. Didn't you hear? Change. Put down that guy to bed. That's right, Ted, with her. Ted, not down the center. Oh, Ted, you're making oh, everything up. up. On every dangle, the green horn. What's the matter, Tommy? You need the compass? Oh, Ted. Don't go. Wait for me. Damn, wait a minute. Let me go, Dave. I think they were mean to Ted. I think, well, it's awfully unfair. You know what is, Dan. He needed a lesson. He's been snooting everything and everybody ever since he got here. That's true, but... Don't let him go. Maybe in the morning he'll be a nicer kid to have around. Come on. Will you dance with your big brother? you are. I, I thought you'd be hiding up here in the loft. What do you want? Nothing. I, I just wanted to talk about last night. What's the matter, Ted? No, nothing. I'm sick of the country, that's all. I guess I just like the city. These kids are on here, they... I'm sorry, Ted. I'm not. I'm glad. I'll even be glad to get back to school. I... I'll miss you, Ted. Oh, how can you? All I've done is... Really, I will miss you. I'll miss you, too, I guess. Ted, let's not talk about it anymore today. Look, I'll take the afternoon off. I shouldn't, but... I know, your project. No, I'll take it off. And we'll get a fishing pole and go down to the creek. Yeah? There's a swell pool. Gee, will you? Sure. Honor, I'll go to the house and get Mom to make some sandwiches. Then we can start right now. Oh, that'll be swell. It will be the only nice thing since I came here. Okay, now. You wait here in the loft. I'll go down the ladder in the back. I don't want Dave to see us leave. Yeah, he'll put up a beef. I'll only be a few minutes. Then I'll call. Anne. Anne, the trap door. Anne, I left it open. <laughs> Doctor, is it bad? It's a sprained ankle. She'll be laid up for a few weeks. You sure fixed it, Ted, didn't you? I'm sorry. It wasn't his fault, Dave. I, I just didn't watch where I was going. Well, why should you? We always keep the trap door closed. Anyone with brains... This would... isn't doing your sister any good, Dave. Well, if that guy didn't think of just himself all the time. I'll leave you now, Ann. You take it easy. Remember, no work. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Bye, Doctor. So long, Doc. I think I'll go outside, too. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Don't pay any attention to him, Ted. I know it wasn't your fault. I... I wish I was sure of that. Now. I I wondered if you'd teach me how to how to milk a cow. Oh, you think you could learn? Me? Sure, I could learn anything. You always have to be a little superior, don't you? Well, I won't teach you because you'll probably sprain the cow's leg, too. Look, I mean it, Dave. I'd like to try and help. 
And I do feel bad about what happened to Anne. You can't feel bad enough to suit me. I know you have a lot more to do than you can handle, and, well, if I could help, some. Well, okay, just to show you it isn't easy. Here, sit in this stool. But watch it, Daphne's temperamental. Like this? Yeah. Now put your head up against her flank. Go on, she can't fall on you. Not bad. Hey, what did I do? Relax, she just knows you're new. Now look, take hold like this. Like this? Yeah, then squeeze down. First your forefinger and so on. Little finger last. Go on. Hey, some milk came out. What did you expect? Root beer? <laughs> Keep going, you said you wanted to learn. It works. Look, I'm milking her. Yeah, but the cow will die of old age before you finish. Come on, keep going. Hey, maybe I can be some help to you before I leave. You mean before I leave? I'm 18 next month, and you know what that means. The Army. <laughs> I thought it was Dave. Look, the doctor brought me these crutches so I can get out a little. Gee, Ann, that's swell. But what are you doing with those pails, Ted? Well, I... I was just gonna... You've been feeding the pig. Sure, why not? Oh, Ted, that's... Well, it's... it's... Gee. And are you the one who's been weeding my garden, too? More or less, I guess. Why didn't you tell me? The garden looks better than ever. In the last eight days, all that stuff has come up. Right out of that brown ground. Just the way you said. You put the seeds in and up come the vegetables. Well, if you think about it, it's quite a thing. Sure it is. You know, I believe you like it here. No, I'm still not crazy about it, but after you sprained your ankle, I thought... All right, stubborn. You only did it for me. You know, Anne... I'm supposed to go home pretty soon. Yes, but I'll be up and around by then, and, and I can take over my own work. But Dave's almost 18, and maybe you'll be drafted. I know. Dad's worried about that. It's been bad enough with Joe gone. I could write to my mother, Anne. Write what? Well, she let me stay maybe all winter. Oh, Dad. If I could be of any use. Oh, of course you could be of use, but... Well, you don't like it here, and... Well, it isn't so bad when you get used to it. What do you think? Oh, Dad will be so glad. And Mom. But you... Well, it's this way, Ann. If Dave's in the war, well, I'll kind of have somebody in the war, too. A roommate. So then it'll be up to me to feed a fighter. <laughs> How am I doing? I'd say I'm really in the groove. I mean, milk smells pretty good when you get used to it. You know, Daphne, that 4 H isn't so bad at that, I guess. I kind of like to tell Ann how dopey I acted, but I can't. And I'd like to join that 4 H club if I could. From 4 flusher to 4 H here. Well, as long as I'm going to be around a while, I ought to take that plague. Now, let's see, how does it go? I pledge my heart. No. Now, take it easy, Daphne. I got to rehearse with somebody, okay? No. Okay, here goes. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger surface, and my health to better living for my club, my community, and my country. Well, Daphne, how's that? Virginia Weidler and Skippy Holmeyer, and to all members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade cast.
Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will bring you one of America's outstanding actors, Edward G. Robinson. The amazing and factual story of the first American underground movement in this war. The Philippines never surrendered. Mr. Robinson will play the role of a school superintendent who stayed on the island of Mindanao to organize Philippine guerrilla bands for warfare against the Japanese army of occupation. for tonight's Dupont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Peter Lyon. This is Frank Graham inviting you to listen next week to The Philippines Never Surrendered, starring Edward G. Robinson on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the Dupont Company of Wilmington, Delaware.